much longer. But no, the reason I said that, folks, breaking news. This happened a mere half hour ago. The Canadian women have won the Olympic gold medal for the first time in history, I think. But uh, that's not wrestling related. But we are a Canadian show, Canadian brand, and uh, we are govern- government inclined to have so much Canadian content per week. Uh, I think that's how that works, right? <laughs> Broadcasting. CanCon. We are. We, we do Can-Con. fall into that's the branch of CanCon. Uh, so, yes, we're breaking news. Canadian women's gold medal. Uh, but we got a, lo- a lot of good Canadian wrestlers on this show as well. So, uh... <laughs> That's all there is to it. That's all you got, Mike. Uh, I'll take over from here. Thanks for this. is the Shoot yeah. Brothers. This is the we? Shoot well. Brothers Wrestling Podcast. Of course, it is the only wrestling podcast online. It was hosted by myself, Cameron Osborne. It's also hosted, oh, hosted by Mike the Shoot Shepherd. Go! <laughs> okay, there we go again. Uh, <laughs> cut to. I, uh, yeah, big news. I'll be honest. I thought you were going to end that gold with a berg. Um, because as we <laughs> make our way good. towards SummerSlam, everybody's favorite... Fifth, everyone's, I'll be honest, every single person's on the planet's favorite professional wrestler is back for his one out of two perform. I mean, he has to be, right? There's no other reason you would be thrown into a main event scene on it for the most prestigious title in the most prestigious company unless you were the most popular and most beloved performer on the entire planet. That is right. We are on our way to SummerSlam. We've got a great show this week. Um, the, the needles are turning towards SummerSlam. Uh, we have this um, AEW homecoming show. We're kind of back at Daly's place uh, after kind of going on a road for a bit, and then we're kind of going back on the road. Maybe that'll sort of be a thing. It's Whenever they can't find a place to plug a date in, there's like great Daly's place, and then uh, they kind of keep moving around the uh, you know the southeastern United States, and then boom, Daly's place again. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad having that option always kind of there in your back pocket. Oh yeah, it's like it's like the luckiest. Well, I guess football season starting up though. They might they might not. Well, well, I mean, uh, well, thankfully, right? You know, uh, Sunday and Monday. And sometimes Thursdays are the football days. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. uh, so I guess yeah. Wednesdays are clear for whatever that is. Um, but let's get into the podcast, shall we? Let's uh, let's kick off the week the uh, the way we always do, which is with crowning a brand new Tweet of the Week champion. It's the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. Um, a little uh, a little kind of preface on this tweet, of course, um, in a surprise to literally probably a lot. I can mm-hmm. say that people wouldn't find this surprising, but it was sometime last week. Mike and uh, you and I t- touched on it briefly. Uh, WWE released Bray Wyatt. Yeah, I mean... If it wasn't already such a crazy year of releases, I mean, it is still shocking, but it's like at this point, almost anyone can be kicked out, it seems. It seems like, unless your name is Goldberg, you will will not get released. It's like five people, like Randy Orton, Roman Reigns. The list is very short of people that I could never see being released. But Uh, I mean, Bray Wyatt. You've put so much time into the character. He was pretty good at selling merch, I think. Um, I mean, and pretty good at dealing with bad storylines and managing to rebuild himself like 10 different times and still getting over. And they still kick him out. So, yeah. The, I, I feel like there's been like three individualized title belts. <laughs> three, <laughs> maybe five maximum. And Bray Wyatt had one of them. Uh, yeah, it is crazy to hear. And of course, uh, everybody, yeah, that's all everyone was talking about. I guess this was almost, uh, I think this may have actually happened sh- the day after we recorded our last episode. Um, and everyone had everyone had something great to say, whether it was, you know, Renee Paquette wishing him the best in his, uh, in his future. Sasha Banks even saying, Bray Wyatt, you've got the whole world in your hands even alexa bliss had a was at a loss for words especially she was you know most recently involved in uh his feud with randy and then presumably his comeback would have had to address her side of the character i mean her entire character right now is based on his character that she pretty much absorbed him and uh they're like well now we just have Alexa. She. Now we just have Alexa Bliss. But out of all the comments that came in, none uh, to me rings more true than now two-time Tweet of the Week champion Mickey James. 
Hey. Uh, a fellow member of the releasing, uh, Mickey James, went out to say, um, following WWE's announcement that they have come to terms with the release of Bray Wyatt, they wish him the best in all of his future endeavors. Mickey James comments by saying, I think what you mean to say was, thank you so much for coming up with such an incredible gimmick time and time again. One so cool and over, we really didn't know how to book it right. So we just gave it to someone else so we can still make all the money off it and let you go. <laughs> Very well said, Mickey, Mickey James. James. And if there's right. somebody who who will be, you know, who will make a scathing comment about a release thing, would be a fellow released member themselves. Yeah, and she, you know, she bounced back. She's what over in NWA now, kind of running their women's division or something. Yeah, doing stuff over there. She's married. She's there. married. She's married to the champ. She can do whatever she wants. Um, yeah, <laughs> who's, but, she mar- who's the champ? Who's she married Nick to? Nick Aldis, still. Oh, okay, okay. Still, yeah, I think cool. he's had he's had that for over uh, two years now. I think. I, well, you know, we kind of with the COVID break, <laughs> including but, the pandemic. Yeah, he's but, still like their guy. Um, it does kind of raise the question, though. You know, um, a gimmick so unique that it they didn't know how to book it. Uh, what do you? Is that does that does that make any sense to you? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, 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 I mean, did they purposely sabotage it or did they just, I don't know what the fuck. And I mean, it, it doesn't al- make sense because it was so easy. He was so, everyone <laughs> loved him. The toys, the merch, the shirts, kids would love that shit. And then they just overdid it all the time. And it almost makes me wonder that in a Loki inspired multiverse, uh, where, you know, where we are now in a multiverse, there's a world where th- they didn't know how to book Undertaker, and then he just faltered, <laughs> right? Like, I would think it's yeah. it's supernatural, it's weird, it's clearly meant to be a show that's put on, and not just Macho Man and Hulk b- being more kind of like classically just kind of like, I'm going to take you down, I'm going to take you down. Uh, playing with the supernatural, uh, it almost makes me wonder that, yeah, if Taker was a 23-year-old kid or however old he was when he premiered at SummerSlam 91 or whatever it was, however old he was at that particular moment, he just would have fallen by the wayside. What the hell is this? We don't know what to do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it actually it actually makes me think about that. Same dude is in charge. The same dude is in charge for both. But for some reason, uh, we don't know how to book the supernatural character. Yeah. I mean, the old man, he's uh, I think we all know he's a bit out of touch. Yeah, just weird. I don't know. But, I mean, I they know. have it. They get him. He got hot, and then they just cooled him off. Then he got hot again. They cooled him off. A world, a world where Undertaker never got pushed. I mean, who would have a streak? Somebody would have had a streak by now. You know, it maybe wouldn't have been at twenty-one. Uh, you know, Mania wins, but we could be in the midst of like somebody's ten. I feel like it would be Roman, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or it would be Roman or John Cena, who would currently be on a undefeated. Uh, WrestleMania streak, and uh, we never would have gotten a Hell in a Cell match. We never would have gotten uh, all the. Uh, we never would have gotten Shawn Michaels Taker. We never would have gotten literally all of that shit. Yeah, the Kane Kane reaction of everything. Exactly. Kane, we Nick never would have gotten Kane. The cell. We never would have gotten Team Hell No. See, Mike, yeah. all of these things actually, uh, yeah, oh, <laughs> makes the me Kane reaction. It's it, so. it is it oh it truly is. So uh, all the best to Bray. Uh, come over to AEW, bud. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. one of the guys. No that, fucking uh, brainer. Sure. Yeah, whoever wants him or whoever, yeah. Have him lead the Dark Order. <laughs> I mean, that could definitely happen. I don't know. I think if there was one person who would kind of spiritually and, you know, uh, for kind of, I think at least people in the wrestling community to be like, okay, you're allowed to. Uh, yeah. you know, there that that is a very very short list, and I think Bray Wyatt is uh one of those guys on that list where the fans and the community yeah. alike would kind of be like, yeah, that's cool because you you and Brody Lee were so close already. This is okay. Yeah, that would make sense, and uh, yeah, I also wonder, yeah, would he come in as a Bray Wyatt type character? Would he be another masked man like the Fiend? Honestly, he'd come up with something entirely different. 
Like that's yeah. that's. Just I think who, I think he liked being the fiend. He liked the mask. He just didn't like how he was booked. Well, it's like okay, now I, let's come up with a backup. What's the backup fiend plan? I'm sure Bray Wyatt <laughs> has it going his head. But yeah, we haven't seen the last of him. I hope he shows up in AEW soon enough, and uh, we can just kind of put an end to this whole WWE thing once and for all. Uh, let's get into <laughs> congratulations, Mickey James. Let's get into the rest of the show um, because we're still a few weeks away from SummerSlam. Three weeks, three weekends maybe. Uh, so we do have a lot of time and a lot of things to build, too. So let's get to this week's edition of SmackDown Live. Okay, folks, it's Friday night. It's time for SmackDown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait. We used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just SmackDown Live. SmackDown. I feel like almost every episode's going to. I mean, before it was Roman Reigns, but now it's going to be John Cena opening these episodes because he's back. Fans are on the road. Everyone's here. So, anyways. John comes out, talks about Roman and how he's challenging Finn instead. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. He just insults him, says he sucks, all this shit. But, eventually, Baron Corbin comes out just looking every week, just looking worse. He hasn't shaved. He hasn't changed his clothes since losing that crown. And the crowd's not taking it easy. They just chant, you suck to him. And uh, Cena's like, hey, they're chanting, you suck. But quite honestly, I have no idea who you are. Which is not true at all because uh, Cena was the one that cost him his money in the bank cash in. So. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. I forgot that. Back in the, yeah. back in the good old SmackDown days. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah. Just Corbin trying to get some pity and... Cena asks the crowd if he should help him, and there's a mixed response. Some of the crowd was turning around, like, cheering, but anyways, Cena pulls out some cash from his pocket, hands it to Corbin, but, uh, yeah, Baron just gets mad, says, you're a rich Hollywood star, that's it, and anyways, he ends up getting an AA from Cena, and that was about it. AA from Cena! This is the main yeah, event. So. so Roman, Cena, that's the main event, right? I'm assuming. Oh, okay. Yeah. I ah, just wondering. I mean, we'll get to. There'll be a contract signing later, I think. I think so, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rey Mysterio fought Jimmy Uso. I guess this, this family feud just kind of continues here. But, uh, yeah, this time Rey and Dominic are, are the ones that kind of get some revenge. They do the cheating, the, the same pin where uh, Dominic holds down Rey from behind. And, yeah, they get the three. So they're just going to keep going back and forth for a while. Yeah, and then next week we're going to get, what, Dominic and Jay. And then uh, maybe some kind of two-on-one match. Maybe some kind of, like, <laughs> we're going to do all the possible options leading up until SummerSlam where we just end up getting a title rematch. Uh, you know, you know, we know how this goes. We've seen this before. Yeah, definitely seems to be. The Have way we ever had an Uso on Uso match? Have they ever turned on each other? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm booking yeah. out loud. My new new segment on the show, booking out loud. I uh, just <laughs> suggest wrestling matches, and then we work backwards to get there. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's happened, but I guess we could have come close in this whole Roman storyline. But we came close. It did feel like it. Uh, the woman's champion Bianca Belair comes out. Big response, nice reaction from the crowd, and uh, this she is past the 100 day mark as champ. So she gets interviewed, gets interrupted by Carmella, who wants another shot. But thankfully, Zelina Vega comes out, and uh, she's like, "Mella, you've already lost three times. It's my turn." So she gets right into the ring, right up to the face to face with Bianca, and uh, yeah, eventually. Carmella and Vega beat up. So, er, sorry, yeah, I'm getting all mixed up. Mella and Vega beat up Belair until Sasha Banks' music hits and she makes her big return. The boss is back. Crowd's going wild. Michael Cole's going wild. And uh, yeah, the two of them beat up the heels. Bianca and Sasha have a hug. And they, they they hug it out. Two former foes. This is Sasha Banks' first... Yeah, she's back. This is the uh, first time we've seen her since Mania, since she dropped that belt to Bianca Belair. Yeah, been a long time, but uh, yeah, glad to have her back. Glad to have her back, especially with the loss of Bayley. That kind of, uh, you know, that uh, we that are the top level of our SmackDown women's division right now is a little, is a little bare. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then we go to a 24-7 title match. Reginald, although I think he cut a promo, he dropped his French accent. He's now just Reggie. No more of Somalia. <laughs> But, it's the sommelier. Forgot, I, I flat yeah. out forgot about that gimmick. <laughs> Reggie's taking on a mystery opponent who, uh, that ends up being Chad Gable, who, you know, I think he's above the 24-7 division, so mm-hmm. that's too bad. But we thought, these, Anyways, we thought these two were involved in, uh, you know, the tag scene, American Alpha. I mean, that's what it should be. Uh, but yeah, Reggie was just flipping all over. Gable was suplexing him, but... Eventually, Reggie does his little senton thing and goes for the pin, but Otis jumps in, beats the shit out of him, causing the DQ. And then he throws Reggie, but Reggie just flips over, lands on his feet, and runs off. Yeah, one of those just odd, one of those just weird kind of things, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why Gable and Otis are involved. In why are Gable and Otis like involved? I, and, I, and I've said this before, I don't like matches for a comedy title. Um, yeah, I mean, at the very least, a Reggie is something a bit different, but yeah, it's still the same shtick. Comedy. It's the same shtick, and also, Reggie was with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler for so long, I f- had forgotten that he had come in initially with Carmella, making him a SmackDown guy. <laughs> and the 24-7 <laughs> oh, yeah. title has been on Monday Night Raw for ever, right? Because that's where our truth is, that's where Akira Tozawa is. And now it's just over yeah. here now, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> I don't want it over here. Yeah, I wonder what, uh, yeah, I mean, if Chad Gable and Otis are being relegated to a gaggle duty, that's not good. Well, but I mean, we'll yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, you know, there's a reason why the BTE championship isn't fought on television <laughs> every week. Like, we haven't got an update on that in a long time. Oh, it was on, Sammy Guevara won and then took it over to his channel, and I don't like his ch- channel, so I was oh, like, okay, so I'm going to wait until it comes back. Uh, that's fair. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it did come back. Brennan Cutler's got it. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, well, let's get this contract signing over with because, uh, yeah, Adam Pierce, Sonya Deville, they're in the ring. Uh, it's supposed to be Roman Reigns and Finn Balor at SummerSlam. So both of them come out, but the crowd is chanting for Cena. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, they cut some promos on each other and. Uh, Roman signs the contract, says, I'm going to smash you, send you back to NXT. And then Finn responds and, yeah, says it'll be my privilege to return to NXT with the Universal Championship. And then just as he picks up the pen to sign the contract, that damn Baron Corbin comes up, beats down Finn from behind. He picks up the contract. He goes to steal it, sign his own name. But then John Cena bolts down to the ring, stops him just in time. He beats up Corbin picks up the contract and signs it with a big sharpie and then just hands it over to Pierce. So you can do that. You can just sign the contract. <laughs> he just signed. And they really got a good camera cut on this. They, he signed all caps, big block letters, Cena. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like a sig. I was like, I guess that's valid. Uh, Roman Reigns did some great work here. Just sitting. He was sitting down the whole time, I think. Uh, yeah. He did some great work. Just um, getting some great facial re- facial expressions out of, <laughs> out of him. Yeah. Poor Finn, and though. To be fair, I think. Yeah, Finn. Yeah, he got that. If you're a big Finn Balor fan, you were like, yes, SummerSlam. That's huge. And then they took it away. Or even, but, why not just, or, uh, you know, I mean, the way he kind of came in, and we thought Cena Reigns was going to be, th- that always was going to be the match at SummerSlam, but why not just Roman Finn before that? They could have, but uh, I guess Finn's going to fight Corbin now at SummerSlam. Okay. Uh, but one thing, uh, afterwards backstage, Paul Heyman was like, hey, this, this can't be allowed. He just came and stole someone else's contract. But then Adam Pierce was like, you know what? The match is on anyway. So just to make sure everything's legal. Just to, so, make, just to make sure that we don't forget. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there was a six man tag match Big E, Nakamura, Cesaro, Apollo Crews, and the Dirty Dogs. Uh, I mean, the match, I didn't really care that much about it, but this crowd was hot. They were just loving everything the baby faces were doing. And, uh, yeah, Commander Aziz attacks poor Boogs on the outside and. Eventually, Nakamura hits a Kinsasha, I guess, to win. So, yeah. Didn't really mean much, but 
crowd loved it. Yeah, the crowd loved it. I wonder what these, uh, how these live, you know, they, you know, they go off and they do their super, you know, they're just kind of non Friday night shows. You know, SmackDown just goes to a random arena and does their own thing. Yeah. I wonder how the what those crowds are like uh, if they've really been like popping off because uh, I feel like everyone is just. I mean, since the return of fans, all the fans have been pretty active. Yeah, I'm sure for now, all the all those house shows are probably getting pretty good audiences. I wonder, yeah, and just uh, you know, from probably some good reactions there too. I mean, hell, yeah, even that, even that, uh, you know, the the Charlotte Rhea Ripley match for Money in the Bank, like that crowd was hot for the wrong reasons, and then ended up being hot for the right reasons. It was, uh, yeah, the way it just turned around. That's the way she goes. Uh, then Edge comes out. And he's doing his entrance. We go to commercial, and then we come back, and we find out Seth has just ambushed Edge from behind and beat the shit out of him, smashed a video camera over his head. And then we just come back. Or, yeah, Rollins is in the ring just yelling an angry promo at Edge. So they'll fight at SummerSlam. I think we all know that. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's a first-time match. And uh who knows who could win i mean edge kind of needs a win but seth rollins is the younger guy so um uh, well i i yeah i think well seth rollins got the better hand of cesaro and they're kind of little back and <gasps> fuck my god excuse me and they're a little back and forth there <laughs> and before that it was just months of mysterio and rollins uh so yeah i feel like this one could really go either way but uh you know two similar styles kind of coming together it'll be cool mm-hmm uh, in the main event, we got Carmella, Zelina Vega taking on Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, who, uh, yeah, just great to have her back. Uh, her and Belair working well together. Two of the top stars. Two of the top women wrestlers in the world, you could say. Um, yeah, just looking good. Zelina Vega, she looked pretty good as well. This was like the longest match she's had since returning. She's oh. had like... I guess other than the money in the bank match. God, well, I feel like the yeah, most she's actually. I feel like she's had like yeah. four or five matches. I mean, she's lo- she's she's not getting any wins yet, but uh, she's doing it. Yeah, I mean, at least she got to wrestle more here, which mm-hmm. is nice. Uh, but eventually, Sasha Banks hits the backstabber on Carmella into the bank statement, and she she taps out. So Banks and Bianca, they're just celebrating together, but Sasha can't help herself, and she hits her out of nowhere with the backstabber. And then she picks up the title, just struts around, pounds away on Bel Air some more. And then she hits this cool, like, rebounding tornado DDT and puts her in the bank statement. And we just go off the air with Bel Air stuck in the clutches of the boss. There's your rematch. Yeah, that'll be a good match. Uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. Really. Remember, a couple years, uh, remember a couple years ago when... Um, like they, it, it, I mean, it was never a rule, but then they like made it not a rule or something that you don't get a guaranteed title rematch. Remember that there was like yeah. it was like a couple years ago they had kind of said like, nope, that's not necessarily going to happen. I would yeah. I would love to see t- uh, from that point on when a belt was defended next. How many times it was actually against, or like, or like rather when that person came back or whatever. How many times it was uh, somebody got a rematch anyways. Y- you know, in this kind of like, in this kind of Sasha Banks kind of way or whatever, you know, yeah, everybody doesn't guarantee to get a rematch, but Sasha Banks gets a rematch. Or, you know, uh, <laughs> does it happen with the Universal title? Like, I-, I wonder how many times it's actually happened without somebody, yeah, winning some kind of number one contenders or them like writing it into a way somehow uh we'll see it but yeah uh high bar <laughs> uh, high bar to uh for them to pass because that uh that match at wrestlemania was a lot of people's favorite of the uh of the entire event yeah very emotional fantastic match so yeah um, we'll see i mean we know they can go in the ring so uh they just got to build the story i mean uh seems like it'll be a similar i guess bianca's the champ this time so Reverse the roles, but uh, similar story. Yeah, is there a, is there a, a female performer who's due to come back or something that uh, you know <laughs> could could thwart uh, Sasha Banks's plan? I can't uh, I can't think I mean, of any. Of course, there is, but at this point, it seems like that performer is not going to be back 
for SummerSlam. Or maybe they'll show up as a surprise at SummerSlam. Who? Oh, Becky Lynch. Yeah, I guess there's always Becky yes. Lynch and then the thought of, yeah, is she going to Raw or SmackDown? That's... Yeah, that's I mean, just maybe kind of it, Sasha, yeah. if Sasha cheats to win the title or something, and then after Becky shows up and it's like, ha, I'm next or something. Who knows? Yeah, could be any one of those things. Could be one of those things. But that's how actually how we close out uh, this week's edition of SmackDown. That's it, baby. That's all we got for you. That's all we got for you. Let's move over to the cards because we're at the Allstate Arena, baby. We are in Chicago, Illinois, home of the chick magnet himself. Uh, the cookie but monster. The Cookie Monster himself, but there's no, <laughs> there's no Cookie Monster here. Just the, uh, just Goldberg. The hot crowd of Chicago. Just the hot crowd of Chicago. Uh, so that's all we got. So let's talk about Monday Night Raw. Let's get raw. <laughs> The, the longest show that's ever happened. You guys know the deal. Um, and <laughs> kicking off this week's edition of Monday Night Raw, uh, Bobby Lashley and um, MVP come down to the ring to address a few things, um, you know, regarding that championship and regarding its fate at SummerSlam. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo! That's right. <clears throat> and uh, they mentioned Mr. Goldberg until the man himself appears and makes his uh, slow entrance down to the ring. <laughs> He cut. Uh, no, he's he cuts he's walking as fast as he can, Mike. When you're no, that age, when you're that age, shape. you're gonna notice that you can't move as quickly as you used to. No, no, he milks it. He milks it <laughs> for the Goldberg chance. Which I uh, think they're piping in now. I lie. I I I do not think the crowd is chanting chanting for Bill Goldberg. Some of the crowd is, but I think, uh, yeah, there might be some piped in. They're extra. piping it in. They're piping it in because he was getting boos later on, uh, later on in the segment. Well, yeah, yeah. It all during the promo he cuts. He was he was started rambling a lot, and he was definitely losing the crowd. And then I'm thinking to myself, you, there's no way that's the same crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we did get some "We Want Wyatt" chants, which hopefully those stick around for a bit. Um, and of course, CM Punk champ. And of course, tonight. you're always you're in Chicago. Why <laughs> WWE even chooses to go to Chicago anymore? Like, I feel like they should just take that as an L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the biggest cities in America, but like, you know what? We just can't do it anymore, guys. Let's go somewhere uh, where they love us. Let's go to where do they love Goldberg? <laughs> uh well. Anyways, after they are done with their trash talk, MVP goes over to the front row. And starts talking uh, some trash to Goldberg's son, who we last saw was quite younger when he was uh, taking his shirt off, dancing with his phone. <laughs> I do recall that. It was probably, that was probably like, what, three, four years ago, maybe now? Uh, yeah. 2016, probably. Yeah. He was, uh, so. you know, like, you know, it's been seven years. You, you know, and, yeah, he was, just a, and if you're, he was just a kid. If you're Bill Goldberg's son, you have two things. Uh, great genes and access to steroids. So, yeah, this kid is looking great. Like, Vince has already signed to this kid, I bet. Yeah, he's got an NXT developmental contract. Are, are uh, you serious? <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh, okay. I was about to say, you said it with so much confidence. I was like, no fucking way he did that. No, no, no. Trips, no. Trips wouldn't want to be anywhere near that. I don't think Trips would give... Uh, he's probably like, no, I don't want a Goldberg <laughs> son on my fucking roster. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but anyways, Goldberg doesn't like uh, MVP talking to his boy. So he just runs down and spears him on the floor. And Lashley just lets it happen. Yeah, MVP, who's still, does, is he still using his little uh, pimp cane? I think little he cane? still I is. I think so. Although he's. I think at this point it's like a gimmick. Yeah, thing. he's taken multiple bumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, relatively uh, s relatively tame, but yeah. I mean, it, although it hasn't been officially announced, I don't think. WWE will probably try to stretch this little build up as long as we can. Um, is it just me, or do Bobby Lashley and Bill Goldberg have the exact same moveset? They both do uh, the jackknife, they both do the spear, and yeah. I guess the, uh, the hurt lock is the only difference between the, <laughs> between the three. Or between yeah, the two, rather. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think Lashley, I mean, part of that was when he came into the business, he was kind of modeled around a Goldberg type. Yeah, they have a similar build, just beef. Yeah. But uh, Drew McIntyre's taking on Veer and Shanky. 
two on one handicap match, but I, I don't think we're worried about poor Drew here. Uh, but you know, the crowd didn't really care that much. There was more CM Punk chance, and you know, I don't really care much about this feud either. Drew versus Gender doesn't really do much for me. Uh, but yeah, anyways, Ginger jumps in, hits Drew with a chair, so disqualification. And I think we said this before, kind of when the uh, the, the Maharaja um, kind of came back and he was on his motorcycle, but wearing like crocodile skin, like shoes <laughs> with those kind of like, they're not, uh, they're not like culottes, but you know, they kind of like their pants that don't come up like a little bit above the ankle. Like he comes in with a weird look with a nondescript new gimmick when these guys already have years of WWE experience, like, you know, to pull on from their previous relationships. Uh, just one of those things, yeah, uh, maybe, you know, Ginger comes back, but not just as a look at me, I have money, I have security, and I hate you kind of guy. Like, I feel like too many people come back with that gimmick. <laughs> like, I have I don't know money. What else Ginger has. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I mean, I don't know, break and, f break and fucking, he's probably got s six different gimmicks on the back burner right now. That he, yeah, uh, Bray's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, Bray's Bray. I don't know. Ginger, I just don't, uh, the ceiling for. My ceiling for gender is pretty low. Yeah, he could if he had he come back with something else that wasn't just like, hey, I've got a motorcycle now. I don't know, yeah. but uh, yeah, especially and I don't think <laughs> very very rarely does having bodyguards. I think like especially multiple help you even as a even as a heel. Like it worked like like gender when he had the uh, the Bollywood boys, right? Mm. These are just like a juiced up Bollywood boys. It, I don't think they really helped him there. You know, uh, having lackeys isn't cool like it maybe used to be. <laughs> Especially when they're like Veer and Shank. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, let's go to Nia Jax taking on Rhea Ripley. And uh, this one actually surprised me. It ended up being a pretty good match, I thought. Uh, like Nia, you know, Nia was looking better than her usual self, hitting some nice power moves. Ripley even hit a springboard Hurricane Rana. Which Nia took well. Um, and at some point, uh, there was like an elbow to Nia's face or something. She gets cut open pretty pretty decently. Lots of blood coming out of there. Yeah, that one looked Very good. Rare. That one looked good. Yeah, I mean, you almost never see women bleeding uh, in general, especially WWE. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Nia fights through it and hits her big leg drop for a two count. So the crowd got pretty into this. Uh, throughout the match, Rhea's trying to pick her up for the riptide, but keeps getting messed with. Shayna Baszler jumps on the apron to distract. Nia comes charging in, but then Ripley avoids. Rolls up Nia. Gets a three count. Um, and I gotta say, yeah, this I think this was one of Nia's best matches in her career. It was smooth. Uh, she was the one that got hurt. <laughs> Not too serious, but the blood looked good. Uh, she looked badass fighting with the blood. And uh, yeah, I don't know. This was a good match, I thought. Uh, yeah, I, no, I, I'd, I'd really have to agree. You know, the first time these two faced off in singles competition... Uh, like there are, there are so many people on this roster, the on the men's side of the roster, the women's roster, NXT, all, everyone who have never gone head to head, and yeah. Nia Jax and and Shayna Baszler also are kind of one of these people where it's just like because they've been involved, uh, because they were the tag title champions and you know just kind of victims of shitty booking, they've just been fighting the exact same three people for the last year. Yeah, pretty much. Right, and then it's like, and then suddenly you see something like Jackson, Rhea Ripley. You're like, oh shit, yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the the um, blood by accident when you know, except uh, in the Dax Harwood style that we saw last week on AEW. Um, yeah, a blood by accident is always cool. I mean, I don't think that photo of Becky Lynch standing in the crowd with a clean face <laughs> would have landed half as hard. As the one um, all bloodied up. So, yeah, this was a fantastic match. Um, why not? Yeah. Uh, and then afterwards, there was a brief argument between Nia and Shayna. Shayna walks off. Then Nia turns around into a super kick. And then Rhea picks her up and hits the riptide. So she gets the big pop. Uh, even though she won the match, but she just wanted to show everyone she could do it. She can still do it. Remember, we're, uh, we're on full Rhea Ripley babyface turn. So, yeah. uh, have you seen those shoulders? They're like boulders. She can pick up anybody. Boulder shoulders. That's the thing they say. There that is, uh, that is a term <laughs> that people use. 
Is it? In the fitness community, hell yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, Then we get some tag team action. Mason T-Bar taking on Mustafa Ali and Mansoor. Rematch from last week. Um, And you know what? This was like the most Dominic Dijakovic I've ever seen on the main roster when at one point T-Bar gets to hit a nice springboard elbow drop. I uh, saw that. He's a, there was a he's, brief he's, moment. I'm like, oh, wow. That's Dijakovic. God, Dominic, is that Dominic <laughs> Dijakovic under all that weird makeup? Yeah. I thought uh, it was I but, thought it was members of the Ascension. <laughs> uh, Ali tags in. He hits T-Bar with a nice hanging tornado DDT. Spikes him hard. And then he tags in Mansoor. He wants him to get the glory. But he screws up and T-Bar nails him with a big discus, big boot to get the three count. So there's your 50-50. There's your 50-50. And just like we said about fresh matches. <laughs> <laughs> like the next yeah. fucking thing. Not- I mean, the crowd, they loved all. I think Ali's from Chicago. I so think really so, too. They Mustafa. seemed pretty hot for him. Um, and, you know, the Mustafa Ali, whether he's pushed or whether he's not, who I mean, God damn it. Yeah, one of the, he's very talented. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Charlotte Flair comes out to cut a promo, but the crowd, they don't want to hear it. They just want to chant for Becky, which pisses Charlotte off. So, uh, she moves on to insulting Nikki Ash. She kept calling her Nikki Cross a lot, though. Which was uh, fine no because, well, uh, because I don't mind the name Nikki Cross. Uh, and yeah, also, I'm they don't call her Nikki Ash either. I know. They're, uh, wh- yeah, which, stage. why not, Jimmy Stewart? Come on. Yeah. It's so uh, Nikki A S H five syllables. And Nikki sometimes Ash. they say the whole thing. Three, They're like she's almost a superhero. Nikki A S H. So now you're like yeah, yeah. So you're wait. saying it twice now. We get oh. it. You, we yeah. get it. Carrying Cross is coming, <laughs> and you want one person on the roster with the name Cross. We can just tell us that. Just tell us, hey, there's this new guy coming up. He has the same name, so we don't want you guys to be confused. Oh, I'm an adult. I can understand yeah. that. I mean, Nikki Ash is fine. Nikki Ash is also A-S-H. fine, but A-S-H, I don't like that. Yeah, don't like it. Okay. Uh, speaking of names, Dewdrop. Um, Spe- <laughs> speaking of <laughs> yeah, names. Piper Niven. Yeah, Piper Yeah, of course, Niven, of course. Dewdrop. They're formerly known as. Uh, yes, so Dewdrop's taking on Tamina, even Marie at ringside. But Natalia's not there after suffering that leg injury last week. It kind of showed the slow-mo replay. Dewdrop just kind of like rolled over that ankle pretty hard. So poor Natalia. Uh, those tag titles. Who knows? I guess they don't care about them. They might just wait till she comes back and not defend them. Right? Yeah, well, I did see a photo. <laughs> I did see a photo of Natalia leaving um uh uh like the hospital being pushed around by TJ Wilson. Yeah. Um. I was like, "Hey," which was weird. So I was li- I was actually uh, listening to a uh, an interview, but like from since Brock Lesnar has left the most recently time, whenever that was, uh, whenever he lost the WWE Championship, mm-hmm. whenever whenever that happened, um, to oh yeah, uh, last year's Mania, yeah. and it was uh, it was a booking decision. It was like an interview was talking about a particular booking decision. Which was um, classic, uh, classic WWE, right? The champion loses in a non-title match, <laughs> which me- and then which means that that person who beat him then gets the championship match at the pay per view, right? Build towards the bigger match, and his thing, he didn't understand that when he got to WWE. Because in his, you know, the world coming from, you know, uh, amateur wrestling, coming from, you know, ultimate, coming from MMA fighting, he was like, that's not how it works. Like, if you're the champion and you lose, you're no longer the champion. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was one of those things, it was just to hear him tell it so, like, almost like in this, like, laymanly, like, in these, like, perfect layman's terms. And you're just like, yeah, like, the, if the champion loses, <laughs> they are no longer the champion. And you see similar things happen in the UFC when it comes to uh, injuries. If somebody is injured while they're the champion, then a, a, an interim champion is then crowned until you can unify the two when that person heals. You know, injuries fucking happen. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, it it is always kind of weird when WWE chooses to like. We know there's an injury, but they're like, no, no, uh, we're just gonna keep it on you guys. I feel like the, you know, instead of having some big pop once Friday night, hey, fucking 
tag team thing. Whoever wins it gets it. And then next thing you know, Shotzi Blackheart and uh, Tegan Knox are the champs. <laughs> you know, like, where's the, the excitement level there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm begging for some excitement in this women's tag team title scene. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what they'll do. Amen. We all are. But uh, this was Dewdrop's first loss on the main, uh, or first singles loss, rather, on the main roster. And it came to the hands of Tamina, who uh, still looks, yeah, she's fine. She's fine, yeah. but um, she, she, yeah, she's, she's gonna have uh, a lot to carry if she is having to carry forward this women's tag division by herself until Natalia is able to heal. Like that's a huge ask, I think, of any performer. Well, yeah, especially Tamina. Um, and yeah, remember, I don't know. Remember uh, two manias ago, I think one of the Usos was hurt, so we had the it was like a triple threat ladder match, but for the tag championships. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? I thought that was yeah, right. a. Re- I thought that was really that was cool. Okay. Yeah, like yeah, and, the match was fun. Because then you know um, the the teams themselves get to have the you know we can build the who are you sending to that match? Is it is Shotzi and Tegan have to kind of have that conversation of who's going to send who and then uh, these sorts of things? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh well. Um. Yeah, so Tamina beats Dewdrop, and then afterwards Alexa and Lily pop up to mock them on the screen. Yes, uh, to mock <laughs> mock uh, Eva Eva Marie on the Titan Tron. Yeah, yeah, we'll see them. Uh, Miz and Morrison are in the ring for Miz TV, and their special guest is long-standing rival Damian Priest. So they kind of just draw back and forth. Crowd chants CM Punk. They all start <laughs> fighting. <laughs> Uh, leads us to John Morrison taking on Damian Priest. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, I like Priest, but the crowd didn't really react too much for Priest here. I think John Morrison is more over than him at this point. Maybe uh, maybe Damian Priest is from a place where uh, where the Chicago fans don't like. <laughs> maybe, yeah, because he got the he hit the sit out choke slam and got the win. There wasn't really a big reaction there. Uh, afterwards, Seamus runs out, attacks Priest, so Ricochet runs out to help Priest. Yeah. I guess they're all kind of in the mix for that U.S. title now. Yeah, they're all kind of around it. Um, but then do we get... That's a match. Do we get that match right now, or is oh, that yeah. having a bit later? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, Priest did Ricochet versus Morrison and Seamus. Uh, yeah, Ricochet does most of the work, just high-flying around. Uh, at one point, they used the drip sticks on the floor to create like a slip and slide. They just slide Ricochet right into the steel steps. Uh, But then back in the ring, Priest takes over, hits the reckoning on Morrison, gets the win. So two wins in a row for Priest and two pins in a row for Morrison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, great to see (laughs) Damian Priest kind of back from injury or wherever he was coming back. Those zombies must have been a bit much for him. Um, as far as far as Ms. TV segments go, this one was probably as boring as it gets. Uh, nothing new was said. Yeah. The crowd didn't seem to care. Uh, yeah, <laughs> meaningless. I mean, it would be one of those things like, uh, like if I'm at the arena, if I'm at the Allstate Arena, and I see them like the the backstage crew starting to set up the Ms. TV paneling. That's when I ask you, Mike, do you want another beer? And then, <laughs> and then yeah. I run, and then I roll up. I'm like, I can miss whatever's gonna happen, and because I, I'll either, <clears throat> I'll either see it next week or I saw it last week, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, this is one you haven't seen yet because we've got Riddle taking on Omos. Um, yeah, Riddle's angry that Omos broke his scooter last week, um, but he's got a backup, so he rides that down. And before the bell can even ring, he just jumps on Omos from behind, and he's got him locked in a big sleeper hold. And you know he's got an early advantage, but Omos is just so big, just starts fighting back, tossing them all around over the barricades on the floor. Um, you know Riddle, he gets in some good strikes. He comes close, but the giant Omos is just too big. Hits the two-handed choke slam, gets the three count. Yeah, because he's a giant. That's how you book a giant. They're dominant, yeah. kind of like mean, that very early Braun Strowman uh, booking, right? Oh man, I guess as soon as Omos was hired, Braun was screwed. 
I just thought about that now. I mean, he was no longer <laughs> the biggest so, guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, simple, effective. Riddle, fa- uh, one of the best, one of the great sellers we have here on the main roster. Uh, of course, you know, waiting for that AJ Styles, Ricochet, Riddle, triple threat selling match. Uh, <laughs> that would be a fucking spectacle. Um, and AJ Styles and Oma still kind of teetering on this babyface heel thing. Really don't know where they are. Uh, but, like, everything they've been doing has the fans, I think, have been pretty into it. Yeah. And, I mean, we're still waiting on this big Randy Orton return to come save Do Riddle. we know? And we know nothing about this, right? I don't. Yeah, I don't know what his absence really is. Is it's it injury, injury personal. COVID, personal? Like, I have yeah. no idea. Don't know. I mean, but, yeah, SummerSlam's getting close. You think he'll have to get, if they're going to book that as the tag title match. Uh, we need you soon, Randy. Rand, the Rand man. <laughs> Come back. Come back home. Maybe he's, go- maybe he's going to AEW. Maybe he's, maybe he's coming all out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we go to Alexis Playground, your favorite place. Her and Lily hanging out when they get ambushed by Dewdrop and Eva. They just beat the crap out of Alexa. And then Eva sits down and insults Lily to her face and then just walks off. But after that, the Lily doll rises up on her own to this dramatic music. And she laughs. And I laugh, but for the wrong reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that looked pretty cheesy. That whole doll just <laughs> and 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 Mike. I mean, we I think we were kind of saying it as soon as we started. As soon as the the inkling of coming back to live crowds came into our mind, we're like, this is not. This might not work. This might not yeah. work. And uh, this, I think, this was ex- one of those exact moments of this isn't working. <laughs> this isn't working. Yeah, I don't know what the... I mean, I thought that at some point Lily's going to appear in physical form, whether that's Alexa Bliss or is that a partner, but if it's just going to be this doll, I mean, what's the end game? Is it Bray Wyatt? Uh, (laughs) Maybe maybe they're trying to go for a Chucky-type situation, or maybe they're panicking because Bray had, like, an outline in mind, and now they released him, and now they're like, fuck, we forgot that he had the ending to the story. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, now they're having to rewrite like uh uh okay uh, uh lily is sister abigail okay somebody write it down somebody write it down okay so who wants to dress up and drag and and play both characters okay okay <laughs> write it down we're gonna use projectors to <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't know this is a mess this is a mess yeah. <laughs> and i don't know who this who's getting over i don't know I mean, when bliss gets in the ring everyone still likes her I mean, the fans like her when she wrestles. But yeah, the fans like, like her when she wrestles. But then it's like this outside. I mean, and, and Chicago's a tough crowd, I think, also to for this. Yeah. For this kind yeah. of like uh, for like a slightly supernatural, not or like maybe just like a not quite over boring TV segment. Yeah. That's a tough crowd That's, to. I mean, you know, you know, th- this this is a crowd who expects a weekly pipe bomb. <laughs> Well, let's move on, uh, because Karrion Cross taking on Keith Lee once again. And uh, there were some small NXT chants going on, which is nice. Um, yeah, Keith Lee, you know, getting some big moves in, but Cross just starts hitting these exploder suplexes into the corner, onto the steel steps. Uh, but then Lee has his big comeback. He escapes out of the Cross jacket, and he hits the spirit bomb, get the win. So, I mean, I'm very happy for Lee to get a much needed win, but again, this 50 50 booking, this makes the undefeated NXT champion not look like much on the main roster. Yeah, the crowd seemed to be into it uh, a little bit, like as the match went on. They came out pretty cold. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this is now two, two out of three losses in the past, uh, or two losses in the last three weeks. Um, for both men. <laughs> for both of these guys, yeah, and courting, actually, uh, yeah, also, Karen Cross had a. Had a had a had a, had a uh, dark loss <laughs> against Dr- against later. Drew Gulak of all people people earlier yeah. on. So like no one even yeah that's that's that doesn't make sense. earlier on in the time or whatever will have you yeah it's I have no clue what's going on Scarlet still is not to be seen 
The only yeah. thing I can think of right now is that he racks up a bunch of L's without Scarlet, and then she comes back, does something, and then he starts Saves winning again. Day. You know, it's like like without her, he's nothing, and like that's unless that's that's the only thing I can kind of see happening right now uh, with him. Yeah, I mean, there's no sign. Yeah, but yeah, he's just we need Scarlet. He's just not over yet. And they want him to be in the main event f scene. They want him, like, Vince wants this guy to be fucking taken on Bobby Lashley for, at Survivor Series. Or the Rumble. Like, that's what he clearly wants, but it's, you can't just bring a, a newbie in, you know. It, well, it, it, just lose a bunch. You know, if it's the likes of, you know, if suddenly, you know, if it's the likes of Gargano or Adam Cole or one of these kind of guys coming up from the main roster, a lot more fans would be like, yeah, you should be in the main event. Hell yeah. But just some guy who showed up a little while ago, yeah, just uh, this, this, this experiment's not quite hitting. Yeah. No, it's just weird how different Cross looks on the main roster compared to NXT where he's booked like an undefeatable guy. Yeah. Very weird. Oh, well. Uh, Reggie, once again, defending that 24-7 title against Akira Tozawa. He's putting in a lot of work, this and man. He's putting in a lot of work. I mean, literally, this guy's flipping around. He actually had the crowd chanting a little bit for him. So, uh, And then he hits his little senton move to get the win, retain his belt. So, I mean, yeah, it wasn't too long. It wasn't too crazy. Um, yeah, oh, whatever. I mean, it's slightly, slightly fresh. It's not just our truth running around. Yeah, I can't tell. What What do I prefer? Uh, the gaggle or this belt being defended? I got. Uh, <laughs> I honestly, I mean, I honestly eventually, have no idea. I'm gonna say the gaggle because it takes up less time. Because they just kind of yeah, run in and run I mean, out. Reggie. Yeah, he can only flip off so many things so many times before you know we've seen it all. Well, no, we we, we got to have a big flip moment at the Rumble. That's what Reggie is moving towards. He's gonna have that. <laughs> he's gonna have like a souped up Kofi Kingston moment. Well, he'll be in the Rumble then. He can be in the actual Rumble. Oh yeah, there's a, there's twenty nine other, there's twenty nine the other spots we can fill with uh, worthy of pe wor <laughs> people who have deserved it. Yeah. Well, let's go to this main event because uh, for three weeks in a row now, Nikki Ash, Charlotte Flair, they're taking up the main event slot here. So. Um, and this is a no holds barred championship contender match, which that word has now lost all meaning on me. That <laughs> doesn't even mean anything. Charlotte's already getting a title match. Nikki's the champ. This match means nothing. But and no holds barred wrestling. is just a fancy way of saying no DQ, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so early on, Charlotte she spears Nikki through the barricade, and then she picks her up, power bombs Nikki through the announce table, breaks that thing down, and. Uh, you know, the crowd was actually getting really behind Nikki here, rooting for that comeback. Uh, they popped big when she avoids a spear from Charlotte. And Charlotte launches through a table into the corner. And then Nikki follows up with this cool, it was like a hanging, twisting neckbreaker, almost like a crossroads type move off the ropes. Mm -hmm. That got her the three count. She pins Charlotte. So that's a huge win for Nikki. Hu and, uh, yeah. Huge win. And also what was easily the best match of the night. Yeah, pretty much the only one worth mentioning. Possibly really. one of the best performances we've seen from Nikki Ash uh, in this whole little run. Yeah, well deserved. Nice win for her if she celebrates. No shenanigans to end the show. Uh, yeah, I mean Nikki. Yeah, she continues to look pretty good here. Yeah, she can Yeah, and this, uh, this, this, yeah, this, this continues to look good. Uh, especially, you know, it's great to see a non. I mean, you know, and you can use the word however you will, but a non-transitional champion. You know, it's uh, she's held on to this thing for a little while now, right? And there's a chance that she will yeah. hold on to it for, if she can hold on to it for a month and a half, that will exceed anybody's wildest expectations of what they thought could have happened. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I really don't know who could uh, walk out of SummerSlam with the title. It could easily be Nikki. She could go longer, but... I mean, like I said earlier, there's Becky Lynch is just waiting in the rings. She's posting photos. She's in. She's working out. Her hair's all dyed orange again. <laughs> she's ready to come back. Uh, she's ready to come back. Apparently, uh, one thing. So sorry, as we as we wrapped up this episode of Monday Night Raw, uh, one thing that was kind of concerning to me was that this was the only um the, the the main event that we had. This match was the only match on the card that clocked in over ten minutes. 
Hmm. We had 10 matches on the card this week. One of them... Wow, I didn't even pay attention. One of them was over 10 minutes, and uh, I would, you know, would you be surprised if I were to tell you that out of the four... Out of the four matches we had on SmackDown, none of those clocked in at over 10 minutes. Uh, Really weird. It felt like um, NXT, well, I mean, we'll talk about it after the break, of course. NXT does a great job of having longer matches. Uh, mm-hmm. Even AEW sometimes shortens them up on you, and you're kind of like, dude, what the hell? Um, NXT, Trips, <laughs> Hunter, you're doing a great job down there of uh, putting on these longer matches. But we have so much talent, so many, literally just people, so many people here on these main rosters. Uh, but we can't put together multiple 10 minute matches on one night yeah i mean they love their talking segments we could have cut out that Miz tv and given some uh, extra minutes to a couple other could have maybe cut out that whole lily thing (laughs) yeah like i feel like yeah i feel like when i finish watching monday night raw i'm just counting down the things what we could have skipped and I'm like, hey, that wasn't necessary to even, even like, you know, kind of long-term booking or whatever. You look at something, you're like, eh, eh, <laughs> eh. I don't know. Yeah, that's raw. That's, and that's, that's raw, raw, baby. That's the first half of the show, Mike. Should we take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back because we have uh, more NXT, of course, as long uh, as well as AEW Homecoming. Uh, so stick around. <laughs> You know when you see, um, like, uh, you have a, uh, a comedian or an actor or, like, some kind of thing that you think they are funny and you think the things that they do are funny, and then <laughs> they'll post a new video or whatever of the thing that you think is funny, and you know it's funny, but you also know that there's no one you, you don't think there's anyone you can show it to because there's no way they'll also think it's funny? Has that ever happened to you? Uh, yeah. Very much, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, very much yeah. kind of like a sh- showing a Tim and Eric, oh, you know, you can kind of equate it like showing a Tim and Eric bit to somebody and yeah. they just, you know, blank face like what, what is funny about this? And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I just, no, I, I uh, yeah, there's a guy who I think is really funny and there was a little video that like, you know, kind of like a, a video po- do it, of him doing his funny things and I've watched it. Eight, nine, ten, twelve times now this morning, and uh, I'm like, there's nobody I can show this to. Like, I don't think there's anybody else who will think this is funny. Uh, but yet here we are. Well, you know, sometimes you just gotta enjoy those little things to yourself. I, uh, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's certain, yeah, certain bands, certain movies that uh, you know, you just watch on your own. Yes. Uh, on very unapologetically too. There are a lot of movies that I will watch again every year or so. Yeah. Certainly, you know, and we've spoken of, you know, watching the Saw franchise. Um, every, you know, every how every every October, I like to go like front to back for the uh, for that franchise, which has a new installment. So it will be nice to kind of you know add something fresh in there. Uh, Fast and Furious is also one that I will rewatch every single year. You know, I just I, I was just in the movie theater. I just saw Fast Nine, baby. It is everything you expected it to be. Uh, Avatar is another one that I will watch every year. Avatar. Oh, I could do that thing. I could do that thing four times a year, honestly. So you actually like the movie? I think that is. I love that. <laughs> Everyone, most people I know, they don't remember the movie at all. They just went for the experience. I've got it 3D. on Blu-ray. I'm looking wow. at the copy on Blu-ray right now. <laughs> I'm staring yeah. at it. I've even got a Blu-ray player so I can play it. <laughs> I don't just arbitrarily well, have. I, I mean, don't... your PlayStation is a Blu-ray player. You don't need a Blu-ray player. That's a good question. No, I, I think I had the Blu-ray before we had the PlayStation. So uh... <clears throat> uh, Terminator um... 2, that's another one that I can just. Terminator 2 for me is actually also like a feel-good movie. Well, there have been times where you're kind of like, you know, you're bummed out or you're overworked or you're just kind of like, huh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day <laughs> and I feel suddenly better. Yeah. No, I love Terminator 2. Avatar, I just find 
like for as successful as it was, it's almost not even mentioned in pop culture much at all. It's gone. Yeah, it real it really is. Yeah. Everyone seems to have forgotten you know, about Like people still like the nightmare before Christmas, I see merch for that and that wasn't nearly the success. Yeah, a film <laughs> you know? that I a film that I've seen once and I only really remember the characters are named Jack and Sally because Mark Hoppus has a lyric in yeah. I Miss You. That's really the only reason why I like remember what's going on. Yeah, no, that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. I mean, for a while, Titanic went away. People turned on it for a bit, but now I think it's coming back. <laughs> I think Titanic. Great <laughs> Titanic's movie. coming back, baby. Yeah, I mean, it was the record holder before Avatar. Everyone, and... everyone get your two VHS cassettes. Because we're watching Avatar front to back. Or sorry, we're watching Titanic front to back. Let's get into the second half of the wrestling week. Yes, let's. And I mean, it's not just it's not just an, it's not just a podcast dedicated to the works of James Cameron. Although we did just mention three of them, Avatar Two is hitting theaters in 2022. Uh, is it? Sure, yeah, and three is currently filming, or like they're in. Th- yeah, they're currently filming almost in post. And then four and five <laughs> is coming out. I think twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five. Oh yeah, that's he's ex- he's expanded. Uh, he's expanded Pandora and the whole Nava heat. I, well, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about that more when the time comes, Mike. But for now, we need to get to our second half of our wrestling week because um, Takeover thirty six is coming up. One thing I like about Takeovers are that they every so often tell us what number it is, so we kind of remember. Uh, they, it's not like Mania, <laughs> where it's like Mania 7, Mania 10, they'll tell us like, they'll give us Takeover 30, and then we haven't, this is the first numbered Takeover since 30, and then the ones in the middle, just kind of fill them in. Uh, but uh, I think they went I think it went 30, 31, and then again. Oh, 31, you are right. Yeah, yeah, It's even weirder. It's even weirder. Even more bizarre. It's like they wanted to do it and forgot. Because we're like, okay, they're switching to numbers. Like, oh, no, we're back to uh, in your house. (laughs) But if we are talking takeovers, we can only be talking about one brand, and that is, of course, NXT, which stands for... Nobody knows. Nobody really knows. Uh... I can't I mean, think, it might not stand for anything. Some, I can't think things. of another promotion that arbitrarily has letters that don't actually stand for anything. <laughs> um, like even CMLL, I don't know what it stands for, but it probably stands for Central Mexico Luchador. Yeah. Like I can kind of like infer PWG, ROH. I feel like there's got to be a company that is just a couple letters and the letters. It's just like Z L F T. Like ABC. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but of course, we are here on the black <laughs> and gold brand that skull and wings logo, looking very horrifying, kind of like that episode of The Simpsons when they think they uncover like a, an angel, but it turns out to be a promotional <laughs> package for a uh, a mall. Yeah. <laughs> we can all Great episode. we can all remember that episode. Um, but let's get into it. Um, let's get into this week's edition of NXT. NXT. What does it mean? I don't know, but it's some good wrestling. So NXT. Watch and see. Gotta tap out a count out of one, two, three. Because a lot of shit's been building toward this looming uh, Samoa Joe type presence has really been evolving in the past little while. Uh, but to kick off this week's show which remember was pre-taped folks we did let you know last week to not spoil it for yourself um because it was on sci-fi again due to the olympic coverage taken over on usa coming down to the ring to kick off the bat we do get a uh, a tag boat we do have members of hit row ashanti the adonis and top dollar taking on members of legato del fantasma of course we're talking about ja- joaquin wild and raul mendoza yeah i still haven't put the time in to memorize who's who. Nope. Legato. Very much so <laughs> like, not. And um, in, in a lot it, easier on Hit Row. Top so much up. easier on Hit Row because they have different <laughs> body types. Like these are just kind of yeah. like, they, I mean, you know, at least give me at least shave one of their hair or you know put a shirt. Something. Give someone shorts. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Uh. Anyways, Top Dollar was looking good. He's in control when Escobar just nails him from behind with a chair, causing the DQ. Uh, and then they just kind of all beat each other up. Or, yeah, they beat down Swerve, hit him with a chair. They yank out his grills, which I don't know much about grills. How uh, how tight are they put on? 
That's a good question. That is a how tight like a is a glove? Retainer that you can just pull them off, or I like to think like it's like a retainer that you can pull out. Not so much like it's veneers. You know, like they're really yeah. strapped on there. <laughs> either yeah. way, is there like a yeah? Either way, uh, either way, that like, that is the uh, the uh, you know like the streets equivalent of um, a wedgie. A wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> So they pull out his grills, they wrap a chair around his head, uh, but thankfully the rest of Hit Row, they pull Swerve to safety. And then B-Fab jumps in, nails Joaquin with a chair. I think it was Joaquin, I just took a guess. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Good guess. And then, <laughs> and then the Hit Row, yeah, they just beat up Legato, so this kind of uh, gang rivalry continues. Yeah, uh, one thing I do like about this is, um, you know, it's it, it's building like the rest of uh, the rest of Hit Row, like it's building their defense of Isaiah Swerve Scott. <clears throat> like, yeah. um, you know, seeing seeing uh, seeing the grills ripped out of his mouth, and then they come together. Affect, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's uh, of, of, they don't want to see their leader hurt. You know, the feud is yeah. only heating up, and we got to give it up for Top Dollar. Top Dollar, um, uh, this past week on NXT performed in his fourth ever wrestling match. Ever in Ever. any company? In any wow. company. Um both members both members of the hit row here, both uh, Ashanti the Adonis and Top Dalla have never worked for anybody outside of NXT. Ashanti the Adonis has we've seen him around a little bit more, you know, maybe for about a, a year bit. and a half now. Small bits yeah. here and there, mostly getting losses, but Top Dalla, this was his fourth match ever. And uh, very, very impressive. I very impressive. Yeah, you gotta say some of these guys. Whatever they're doing down there at the PC, god damn it. Yeah, I mean, he's got the confidence. Top dollar, he walks out there like he fits in. So, give him credit. Amen. Yeah. Then, uh, well, we've got the Ridge Holland. He's back, and he's taking on Ikemen Jiro, who I think's already been eliminated from the breakout tournament. But the crowd likes him. He's flashy. He's got this jacket on. I think he wrestles with the jacket on most of the time. But. Yeah, he, he seems like a <laughs> seems like a cool. Seems like yeah, just like an interesting kind of character, you know, in that same kind of yeah. way that a lot of New Japan stars come out with a with good ring attire, a good look, a yeah, good pose, flashy, high flyers. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So he was cool, but Ridge Holland, he's the uh, the bruiser. He just dominates. Hits a big. Uh, it's like a thunder driver to get the win. I forget what he called. And uh, this was, yeah, Ridge Holland's first action since probably fall of last year when he suffered that, uh, uh, that nasty leg. Gruesome. In, well, apparently not that uh, so gruesome that it kept a note, but not so gruesome that he had to retire. And well, yeah, <laughs> thankfully. And it's nice to see uh, members of this breakout tournament, uh, you know, I mean, getting a loss. Not everybody can win every match, but it is nice to see members of the breakout tournament now getting work, now being on the yeah. show. Yeah, work your way up. I mean, Ikemen Jiro, he's now a face that I'll recognize from week to week. And yeah. I'm sure he'll start getting a couple wins here and there. Agreed. But some guys we definitely recognize. They dominated the brand for years. Uh, we got Bobby Fish taking on Roderick Strong. Just, uh, yeah, this was just a hard-hitting grudge match. We all know the history. Uh, yeah, this was just lots of reversals here. Really good match. Uh, Roddy takes over. Just starts throwing everything at Fish, and he hits him with the Falcon Arrow into the backstabber to get the three count. But yeah, I enjoyed this. It was good, solid. Uh, lacked any kind of heat. I felt uh, the wrestling, f you know, the kind of the, the smallish crowd there at the Capitol Wrestling. Yeah, the Center. crowd. I mean, yeah, I feel like Bobby Fish. I mean, we all we like the guy, but he has the least. Like we don't really know much about him. He just has a little fish bone on his trunks. <laughs> his <name is> fish. <laughs> yeah, he That's was the, he was the F in the CFO dollar sign. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Rod, Roddy Roddy's going to get the win as the leader of this diamond mine. It would be it would be a bad idea to. I mean, especially after I think he lost last week in a tag match. So uh, we got to kind of build this boy back up. Yeah. Um, at some point, we get a video of Kushida who challenges Roderick Strong to. Uh, yeah, he'll defend his cruiserweight title against him. So I think that happens next week. Yeah, that's great news. So. Great news to have a yeah, just fucking book a match on a TV. Like it doesn't. We don't have. We don't have to have every single match on a pay per view. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me. You're excused. Uh, L.A. Knight 
teaming up with Butler, Cameron Grimes, taking on the Grizzled Young Vets. And Knight forces Grimes to wrestle in that Butler uniform. So, <laughs> But we know Grimes. He's, he's more than skilled enough to be able to pull this off just fine, hitting all his regular moves. Uh, but Knight just leaves him hanging when he goes to tag out. But this just fires Grimey up, and he just goes on a roll for a bit, fighting two-on-one. Hits a nice double Hurricane Rana. He's looking for that cave-in, but then the numbers just become too much. Uh, Grizzled Young Vets take over, hit the ticket to Mayhem, get the win. <clears throat> and then I think afterwards, Ted DiBiase comes out just to kind of help Grimes. But come on, kid! Yeah. Come on, kid! Yeah. You gotta get back on the horse. Helps, yeah, hel- helps him out there to the back. Or, out, so, yeah, sorry, helps him, you know, to the backstage area. Yeah. Uh, y- y- yeah, um, out of all the NXT stories going on right now, um, this is a, the crowd is invested in this one. <laughs> the crowd is really invested in this one. When Cameron Grimes yeah. gets that, when he, he, he was, Cameron Grimes got the hot tag today, or in this one, uh, you know, it was fired up. I think, uh, this still re- continues to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, this is a long-term story that hasn't doesn't feel fully played out yet. So no. we're all just waiting. Grimes needs to get that big win at TakeOver, and then we'll all be happy. Of course, yeah. Uh, I think uh, we had a nice little video promo from Dakota Kai just explaining her actions for attacking Raquel. You know, standard. I was overlooked, all that. But, yeah, so, I mean, I guess she's the heel going in, but I feel like, the crowd might cheer for Dakota over Raquel when it comes down to it. This felt like a badass promo, too. I mean, you know, of course, being pre-taped has always helped, um, you know, because you can kind of work on uh, whatever. But, yeah, she, you know, in one kind of promo kind of reshaped the whole story of the whole angle, you know, yeah. explaining why, we're, why we are turning on Gonzalez. Yeah, it still feels like... Raquel Gonzalez will be standing tall as the babyface champion. Um, however, you know, Dakota Kai's definitely earned her own run as champion. Yeah, she's been in NXT a long time. She's always yeah, got good matches. She's come back from injuries. So. One of the more I see Dakota yeah, winning. one of the longer standing NXT uh uh performers over the last, you know, just since. It's been years. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I think that was the only appearance from uh the the women's title thing this week. So yeah. we go back to the ring where Trey Baxter takes on Joe Gacy in the final first round match of the NXT breakout tournament. Uh, I feel like all these first round matches were kind of like big guy versus little guy. And that's what this was again. Yeah. And yeah, jo- <laughs> Joe Gacy was our big boy here. <laughs> yeah. And Baxter, he was just flipping around, diving to the floor. The crowd got behind him pretty good. So, uh, well, he ends up, he hits a 450 stomp to get the win, but I think it should just be called a 360 stomp because he's not doing a 450, right? Yeah, they, well, they, yeah, yeah, they, they, they called it a 450 stomp, and I was like, ooh, and then, yeah, yeah. they showed the replay, I'm like, eh, well, it's still, yeah, I, it's a flip. It's a I still couldn't do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it into a pool. Maybe. I, maybe. I don't know. I've never, I've never never really done many flips into a pool. I have a shallow uh, we have a shallow pool. So it was always well, sort of like yeah. you dive shallow, but other than that, like, yo, <laughs> don't don't do anything don't do any of that crazy shit. Yeah. But I bet if you really put your mind to it, you could do a front oh, flip. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> uh well, two people that aren't quite as good as friends as us yet. Uh we go to Zoe Stark and Io Shirai. I think last week Zoe was trying to you know, kind of be like, hey, yo, we're, we're champs now. Let's be friends. And he was like, ah, I don't need friends or something like that. Kind of giving her the cold shoulder. But she agreed to go to this uh, Japanese restaurant. And, yeah, Stark's just trying hard to be friends. And EO's ordering in Japanese with the waitress. And Zoe's just kind of out of her element. Doesn't know what to do. They order a bunch of food. And Zoe doesn't like it. So she's, like, flinging octopus into the counter behind her, trying to hide all her food. Uh, EO just sticks her with the bill at the end. I don't know. This whole segment was pretty bad. EO's, I don't know why EO's being mean, and I don't know why Zoe's acting like such an animal in the restaurant. I don't know. Yeah, no, you, you, no, you are exactly right. No idea what the hell's going on here. Um, because they're the champions. You think they would just be like, hey, 
Yeah. Who, who wants a shot? Friends. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, EO, I mean, EO, I know she was heel for a bit, but she doesn't seem like someone who'd be just mean for no reason. Like, why not just get along with Zoe? Yeah, I always felt like, and even so, she was always a babyface champion. She was never a yeah. heel champion, I don't think. Yeah, so it was weird. I didn't really think this segment did much, but I don't know. I feel like they're going to keep doing this. They're going to do the odd couple, and hey, now let's go get pizza, and EO's going to be weird, or I don't know. Yeah, well, Who I mean, ha- having just lost both Shotzi and Tegan Knox, I, which was the weird part, because we took two women from two separate tag teams <laughs> to bring them to the main yeah. roster, and Trip Trips knows that you can't just put Ember Moon and whoever the fuck Tegan Knox was with. I can't remember now. Yeah, it's you, been so long. You can't just take their other... Me- their other team members and put them together and have it make sense. He knows that doesn't. That's not how that works. Uh, so yeah, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I think at this point, Carrion Cross just jumps over the barricade because I think all night Samoa Joe is waiting for him. But Cross jumps up, stands on the announce table, just cuts a promo on Samoa Joe. So Joe comes running out, but then the security guards hold him back. So he just beats the shit out of all of them and. Uh, works up a good sweat here. But I think that's the most physicality we've seen from Joe in a while. Getting to beat up all those guards. Yeah, since he would have been out. Um, <clears throat> would have been out last. I mean, yeah. this is this will be possibly a main event down there at TakeOver 36. The question is, well, yeah, like, is this, uh, are we getting the title change? I mean, that's what I would love. Um... Yeah, I don't know. With this whole Karrion Cross and Monday Night Raw situation, I mean, if he's going to get called up, he should be dropping that belt. Yeah. And especially if he's going to keep losing on Raw, you're just making the champion look even worse. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, either way, though, I'm very excited for the return of Joe. Not only the return, re- or not only the return of Joe, we do get uh, a pre-taped uh, video package vignette of the ongoing saga of both Walter and Ilya, I- Ilya Dragunov. Uh, nice. Because guess what? We are getting a rematch of, what was it, a five and a quarter star match? Five and a half star match from last year on yeah, NXT one UK. of the best matches. That my runner-up for match of the year. One of the best matches you will ever see uh, coming out of WWE and NXT. And uh, we are getting that rematch at TakeOver 36. Yeah, um, that's uh, that might be one of my most hyped matches of the weekend between both shows. So yeah, yeah, uh, no, it it really will be. And uh, Walter's been holding on to this belt for hundreds of days, eight hundred, hundreds like yeah. of days now. And you know, the although smaller in stature, the Ilya Dra- uh, Dragunov really feels like the only kind of guy who could take it from him. Yeah, I mean, we, I'm sure I can't really name many other guys on that roster, but. Those two guys are special. Walter, he feels like a spectacle when he comes into town. Yeah. Comes into the American soil. Uh, now, so, yeah, do we know awesome. at all if TakeOver 36, is it happening at the CWC or is it happening in uh, maybe uh, some kind of... <laughs> um, I mean, at this point, if they haven't announced it, it might be the CWC. It might just be. But yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. And that's Weird. fine. I just, you know, I, I just, I just wasn't sure. Not sure if you heard any info on that. Yeah, no, I would have hoped for a bigger crowd, or maybe they can expand the crowd there. Who knows? I think it's well, opening the ceiling. They need like a Sky Dome style area <laughs> because it's the closeness, the closedness of the sound, which really gets to me. I think you need yeah, it to be. I mean, you need it to kind of ring out. Yeah, it'd be nice. We'll see. It would be we'll nice, Mike. Take over. It would be. <laughs> Let's get uh, let's get on to our main event then, shall we? Uh, because for weeks now, the index has been clawing at our heartstrings, and the rest of the members of the way um, have kind of had enough. Or without Austin Theory, by the way, I feel like I haven't seen him uh, on television lately. Is that just me? Um, yeah, yeah. But what we are getting is a love her or leave her match between Dexter Loomis and Johnny Gargano. Love her or lose her. Lose her. Are you sure? Okay, lose her. Love my her mistake. My her. mistake. My mistake. Uh, so for yeah, for the fans who don't know what's going on, um, all that's happening is so women are property. Okay, so this is just one thing I want to get out of the way. 
<laughs> women are property, and it is us up to us men to fight for them. Winner, of course, gets to own the property. Just kind of like two guys would have a thumb war over, uh, uh, you know, something they both found together or something, or flip a coin for it. Um, and just like any other piece of property, uh, you need a match to determine that. So if Dexter Loomis wins, he gets to keep Indy Hartwell. But if Johnny Gargano wins, he gets to keep Indy Hartwell. Um, there you go. That's all the background information you need. There's a matchup that happens between these two guys, uh, Dexter Loomis and Johnny Gargano. Yes, you'll see this step come into play. But uh, early on, Indy... You know, this too much is on the line. So she comes out to watch from ringside. The crowd was chanting for Index. They want to see a good love story. Get a happy ending here. Uh, but Candice LeRae doesn't. So she comes out. She's trying to pry Indy away. And Johnny and Dexter are just having a nice hard-fought match in the ring. Back and forth. Uh, Johnny gets him in the Gargano escape. Dexter makes it over to the ropes. But then he just kind of caresses Hartwell's face while he's grabbing the rope there. And Johnny yells at Indy. Dexter rolls up Johnny, but then he gets kicked into Indy. Knocks her to the floor. <laughs> As the race car comes roaring by. <laughs> <laughs> so Indy is knocked to the floor accidentally by Dexter. So Lewis is very concerned. Goes to check on her. Uh, but this allows Johnny to hit a suicide dive into a DDT onto the floor. And then he follows up with one final beat to get the win. And prevent this love story from unfolding. Um, but, you know, like you laid out. I mean, can you really... You can't just control a person's <laughs> life like that. You can't just ban love and control a family. This is not. Not in the free world we live in. Uh, so is the way go to leave. Indy's looking back all sad. But then she turns around, runs into the ring, jumps onto Dexter. And they just start rolling around, making out ravishly. Uh, but we get our happy ending after all. I guess we get our happy ending. Indy, Indy Hartwell's out of the way. Um, is she out of the way? Or is, I don't know, possibly. You know, or is Dexter just that gritty boyfriend she brings home that parents don't like? <laughs> Maybe more of that. The tortured artist. Um, yeah, he's got tattoos and he's... And a mustache. They a mustache. <laughs> Yeah, he you doesn't know talk much. So we haven't seen uh we haven't seen a love angle since the payoff we did not get between Mandy Rose and Otis. Um, <laughs> that was I think that was the last time we saw a you know a, 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 the couple kind of angle. Yeah, a prolonged a prolonged uh, yeah. You know uh, which you know you see, yeah you see it you see it every so often. Um, yeah, the fact that. The two, uh, my two favorite stories on NXT right now are Index and LA Knight and Cameron Grimes. Like the two comedy angles might not be a good uh, telling of kind of what's happening here on the NXT, on the rest of the roster, rather. Uh, Adam Cole, Kyle yeah. O'Reilly, nowhere to be seen. Uh, we still aren't that hot on Karrion Cross, although we do want Samoa Joe to win that title. There's some some great work going on between uh, I guess ta um, Hit Row and Legado del Fantasma, well, but I think right now my two favorite angles are the comedy angles. Yeah, I mean this uh, this I mean before this Indy Hartwell, I mean we we liked her, but this is giving her a lot. I mean people who didn't know her, they'll know her now. You Indy know her Hartwell. now at least, yeah. Um, and yeah, speaking of Adam Cole, I'm sure you've heard all the hot. Rumors and stories going on about him. I haven't. No, tell contract. me what's up. Contract. Uh, have not? Oh, would he, no, he didn't get released. I would have. I would have heard if he got released. <laughs> no, no, he hasn't got released. But apparently, his contract ran out at the Great American Bash, and people didn't realize. Oh shit! So they basically got like a quick agreement. So he's extended till takeover. But after that, he's pretty much a free agent. A dub. So, uh, Go a dub. Well, I mean, yeah. There's. I mean, I'm sure Triple H is going to come in with a heavy offer to try and keep him. But yeah. Hot rumors are swirling. I don't think Triple H gets that kind of money on NXT. And I don't think they'll get, like... Well, I mean... Uh, um, I think Adam Cole's his golden boy that he would not want to lose the money. Well, what. and you hear about Adam Cole, like... You hear that tr uh, Triple H and, and Shawn Michaels are literally his, like, childhood heroes. And, yeah. <laughs> and, he, gets to, and I think I, yeah. he gets to learn and work with, you know, or work and learn from... Uh, his two childhood heroes, but Mike, I, 
I, I'm processing, processing this news fresh. You just told me this information. You need to read. Uh, I guess you haven't been reading any dirt. I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been too busy. I've been working a lot. <laughs> but, no, that's good. Hey, some, keep your nose out of the dirt. Keep my nose out of the dirt. <laughs> exactly, Mike. But wow, my first... Oh, wow, shit. Adam Cole needs to go to not WWE because that's where he can make the money that I think he obviously deserves. I don't think NXT, I don't think NXT stars get paid as well as... Even the, I, as well as main roster performers, right? I don't. Yeah, I, on a, but there's no reason that Triple H can't just write a check. I don't know. I, I mean, who knows, right? I'm, <laughs> I mean, but, I'm sure he's got a budget, but it's like, hey, Vince, this guy. Of course, right? But stuff. is whatever budget he have more than AEW slash New Japan slash uh, could offer? I mean, this is a former member of the Bullet Club who could show up at a Wrestle Kingdom and blow the fucking house down. Just he like he could show up at an all out and blow the fucking house down. Uh, and the thing is, because his contract is up, there's no 30 day, there's no 90 day. He could wrestle on Takeover Sunday and show up on Dynamite. So, on so like, think: Would you rather make <laughs> main roster money working for AEW one night a week? Where or two with Rampage? Or two with Rampage? You know, but and, and <laughs> in the same where, the same company where your girlfriend also wife girlfriend. Per partner uh, also yeah, life partner life partner also works at like that kind of seems like a no brainer across and you know especially you get to the main roster how do, where does Adam Cole fit into the main roster right now I mean maybe, okay. maybe he never goes to the main roster and then what just sits there on less money no I don't Cole, no, I'm not, Cole I mean, you know maybe, you know what say. Adam Cole you know what the right choice is Bob you know what the right <laughs> choice is he is the longest. <laughs> single he has the longest singular reign for both the PWG and the Ring of Honor championships. These guys fucking want you back. Um, and the NXT championship. And the NXT championship. Adam Cole, Kenny Omega book it right now. I'm not saying I don't want it to happen. I feel like Adam Cole, you know, if they were the same amount of money, he might want to stay in NXT and someday be sitting in that chair beside Triple H and Shawn Michaels teaching the younger guys of NXT. That is a good point. That is a good point. It is. Uh, it is. Yeah. Fuck. I well. I. I. Yeah. I don't want him to. I don't want him to stay. I'm not. I'm not saying. I want I him mean, to go. Him, there, there's just so many hot talents on the on the table right now, and all elite wrestling is. Yeah. It's so like right now, out of out of performers that could be performing, but we have not seen yet. Uh. So CM Punk, Brian Danielson. That's going to be hard to say. That's going to be a real tough one to change that to Brian Danielson. Yeah. Um, so it's not quite as smooth. Not quite. Especially, yeah, especially we'll because, there. like, yeah, like, Miro, like, that was a totally different name. <laughs> but we're kind of, yeah. like, swapping the person. I'll probably just say Brian. I might just, just say, say Brian. Brian. That was probably easier. <laughs> uh, Bray Wyatt is now a dude. And, of course, uh, you know, flip it around. We also have uh, Lana, CJ Perry. She's also out there rocking somewhere. We have Peyton Royce. We have Billy Bloody Kay. Uh, there are a lot of people who have not shown up yet. And also this past week, it just happened. Ric Flair got released. Not that we're going to see him wrestle, but, you know, that's a three you could have three parts of the four horsemen in aew where's the fourth is has he passed on well i mean ole anderson i think he's still alive okay i don't know there's a couple other fours i don't know but either way three out of four and then once rick goes i mean charlotte her father and her fiance are in aew that would be charlotte sick. Flair that would be s i would lose my shit if charlotte i heard that Flair... uh charlotte recently trademarked the name ashley flair so uh, I would lose my Ashley. fucking pants. I think it, WWE would lose their pants. They put all this time into her. And they would lose. Gone. Yeah. Well, they 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 would fucking uh, they'd fucking lose everything. <laughs> wow. I think yeah, that'd be huge. That We're getting crazy here. This is, but these are the rumors. This is the world we live in right now. This is gonna be a crazy summer of wrestling. Yeah, I honestly or can't least... wait for all these people to show up in AEW. <laughs> we got yeah. Rampage. We got a whole another hour. We gotta fill. Plus dark, yeah. plus dark, Ella. But we got so much fucking time to fill. And all of these performers are also wanted all over the world. They're wanted in Impact. They're wanted in PWG. On the weekend, none of the Malachi Black showed up to uh, hit that black mass on Bandito to close out the first <laughs> PWG show in over a year. I mean, these performers are wanted all over the planet. Uh, so why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And... Out of everywhere in the world, their home base happens to be Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> and that's where they're going. 
Uh, that's the homecoming. So let's just jump right into AEW Dynamite. AEW. All Elite. They coming for you, Vince. Better watch out. It's too sweet. Only a few more Dynamites. Oh, fuck. Wow. Oh, man, you, you know what I just kind of thought of? I had not thought about this before. What are we going to do about Rampage? <laughs> ah! well, it's only one hour it's only, only one, hour. one hour thank god we'll have to see how that one plays out god we may need a whole new yeah, re- we, can re- we might need a whole new fucking reformat two shows a week two shorter shows a week or something jesus yeah, can, christ uh... Yeah, and it's on a Friday. Well, I guess it's the same day as SmackDown, but uh, well, yeah, we'll figure we that. Out. I guess we'll figure that out as we go. I guess uh, how we, got another we two weeks. Yeah, we got another two weeks before Rampage is um, kicks off live from not Madison Square Garden, but I think in New Jersey or something. Like also kind of like New York. State I think it's or Pittsburgh. Whatever. Oh, oh, you are right. You are right. You are right. The Britt Baker. Pittsburgh. Britt Brit Baker is all over those promo. Uh, that that uh that that promotional content, but let's get into uh, this week's edition of Homecoming. We actually kick off this week's edition with uh, the uh, the third installment of the Five Labors of Jericho, the third labor where Chris Jericho must win with a top rope maneuver, where he will be taking on none other than Juventud Guerrera, uh, stepping into the ring for the first time in what I can imagine is years. Yeah, I mean, these two haven't fought each other since 1999. I mean, I know Juventud hasn't, I'm sure he's been active, but uh, yeah, I mean, definitely a throwback here. Uh, yeah, I mean, Hoovy, I mean, this wasn't quite as hot as that death match. You could, it's hard to follow that one up, but uh, yeah, you know, they were still, uh, the crowd was having fun reacting to the, the legends and chanting for Jericho. Uh yeah, there's a couple attempts. Like, they fight to the top rope. Juventud goes for a Hurricane Rana, but Jericho catches him. And then he jumps downward. Bit of a scary landing, but right into the walls of Jericho. But I don't even know if that would have counted. I also was second. not sure if that would have counted, <laughs> but they played it off like it would have. So I was yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah, like he was holding it to crawl to the ropes. So, anyways. Uh, but Juventud, he doesn't have to follow those rules. He hits a Hoovy driver for a big two count. Goes for some more, but Jericho hits the Judas effect, but he can't pin him, so he climbs up the top rope, hits a diving, spinning Judas effect, and that gets him the three count. So that was fun. That was unexpected. Uh, yeah, but well, not not the win, but the the diving Judas. The effect. diving, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I think you and I were both kind of thinking the lion salt off yeah, the top rope if possible, <laughs> but no, it ended up being that uh, yeah, that, that was cool, that devastating Judas effect. So as Jericho celebrates, Wardlow comes in, attacks from behind, uh, beats down both. Uh, or, yeah, MJF gets on the mic as he's getting beaten up and tells Jericho, opponent number four is Wardlow, and the stipulation is that MJF will be at ringside. So, no, nah, not the craziest step, but I think yeah, I the think, inner circle's already banned. Well, yeah, I learned a couple things from this, uh, from this one. So, one... Uh, yeah, well, you and I were kind of thinking maybe in this like retirement tour style, you know, the fourth labor will be somebody else from his from Jericho's past, yeah. uh, which you know ended up not being the case. Um, secondly, MJF had mentioned that MJF himself is the fifth labor, and for whatever reason, I thought there would be five and then MJF. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that would have been nice to have one more surprise, but. which was a bit odd. And uh, but and then thirdly and finally, MJF had said that he himself will be ringside, but then Jr. starts telling us that he will be the referee. Yeah, I think Jr. screwed that one. Up. Okay, I yeah, I mean he's like the... I mean he's done it before, but it's one of those things where I heard that I was like, <laughs> oh shit, oh, uh, you know, because uh, throughout commentary on the entire evening, and he MJF has done it before. Commenting on um, Aubrey, what's her name? What's her last name? Edwards. Aubrey Edwards is uh, officiating, you know, kind of like little jabs here and there. So I was like, yeah, it makes sense that MJF would want to be the official. Do that old thing like uh, Dean Ambrose did against AJ Styles where he does the one, two, and then just doesn't do the three. (laughs) And like like, holds it there. I think uh, against one of those... uh, uh yeah, one of those matches when those two guys were going back and forth. Um yeah, I mean the the uh the labors have been cool. Wardlow feels a bit lackluster. 
But yeah. um, I guess we like will maybe see. Maybe if you had swapped, like, had Wardlow number two and Nick Gage number four, it might have felt, yeah, like the big death match. A little last... more, yeah. And then, I mean, because I also thought that it would uh, culminate at All Out. But we are still a month away from All Out, and only, like, we just have the one more labor to go. So, weird. Yeah. We'll see. But, uh... What do we got? A six-man tag match next. Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, Darby Allen taking on Daniel Garcia and 2.0, who you may or may not recognize as the recently released Ever Rise. And I was trying to wonder, were they just released with no uh, clause ever? I feel like they were just released like last week. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It didn't uh, feel like that long ago. Month. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess, or maybe it was like just 30 days on the dot or something. Who knows? But, <laughs> maybe. Uh, anyways, the match was solid. The new guys were getting some good moves in, but you know, look who they're up against. They're not going to come in and beat these top guys. So, uh, yeah, match was good. Uh, Darby gets the pin after hitting the coffin, coffin drop. Yeah. This match was just fun, fan friendly. Take yeah, the most popular the stars in AEW. Have them sing Wild Thing. Uh, <laughs> this is exactly what it was. There was a good bit, uh, you know, 2.0, love to see good Canadian kids out there. There was a good bit where uh, I think it was one of them was just kind of marking out to Sting at the uh, at ringside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah before yeah. kind of yeah. getting hit with this nasty fucking uh, Tope Suicida f- uh, by by Darby. It was, uh, it was a fun one to see. But, um, yeah, it was fun. Fun throwaway contest. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we go backstage where the hangman, Adam Page, is talking to the Dark Order. Just basically like, hey, man, you know, you guys are good guys, but I think got to go our separate ways. I got to do things on my own. They try to talk him out of it. But uh, Uno's just like, no, guys, if he wants his space, let's give it to him. So, hey. Yeah, you got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. Lone cowboy. Yeah. Christian Cage takes on the blade. Uh, Christian's in control when the bunny grabs him by the leg. So Layla Hirsch comes running out. She attacks the bunny and they fight off to the back. Uh, So the guys, they start slugging it out back in the ring. Blade goes to rip off the turnbuckle pad. But the referee stops him. But while he's busy fixing that, Blade pulls out his brass knuckles but then he turns around into a spear from Christian. And that gets Christian the win. Remains undefeated. So they say. Well, yeah. And uh, he is the um, he is the number one contender right now, actually. Uh, yeah, Tony tells him that backstage. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, Christian's your number one contender. But if Christian versus Kenny Omega, I don't know if that's an all-out worthy title match in my opinion. Yeah, this uh, this main event or all out is shrouded with secrecy and nobody knows what's going to happen, which I think is certainly like for the best. Um, yeah. We feel I like mean, we feel like it should be Adam Hangman Page and Kenny Omega, but there is the looming presence of two of the biggest superstars of all time, having <laughs> been signed alongside Christian right there. Uh, wow. Yeah. A lot of action yeah. around that main event. Yeah, I mean, I guess that they feel CM Punk would be the biggest, would would be the main event. His return in Chicago would overshadow, so maybe they want to save Adam Page's big moment for a, a different time. And have CM Punk's first match be an L? No, not CM Punk doesn't challenge Kenny. He just challenges someone else. Oh, some random. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying yeah. you're saying whatever CM Punk would do at All Out would completely overshine. Like, the crowd, I think it'll just be hotter for that than anything else. Even Hangman winning the big title. So, I mean, they, I'm thinking that that's what they're thinking if they're if they're pulling, if they're not going to go ahead with Adam Page versus Kenny Omega. Yeah, that is a good point. And then also to think, how does Daniel Bryan uh, fit into this? I think about it exactly, um, uh, exactly like, uh, I think it was Revolution 2020. The, uh, the Bucks and... Kenny Omega, Adam Hangman Page completely overshined John Moxley winning that AEW World Championship off Chris Jericho. Not because it was anyone's fault, but because the thing that happened before it was you. We yeah. couldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> Just an amazing match. Uh, but yeah, like we said, 
it's all very shrouded in secrecy. So uh, until the show is booked and done, or yeah. even until until the, the yeah, we won't know what's going to happen, which is exciting. So yeah, uh, we get a video, just kind of promos cutting back and forth between Santana and Ortiz and FTR. Uh, well, mostly just Harwood talking, and uh, we get some more revealing footage of that injury from Cash Wheeler last week. Uh, or I think, as I suspected, he's, his skin got caught on a hook, and they showed a steel frame of his skin being stretched. <laughs> yeah, which and was good just, that I, because I thought it was, I felt like a compound fracture. Yeah, the way it just, the blood worse. sort of popped out. The way I was like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> no, just a nasty catch. The screw took a big slice out of his arm, so. Uh, hopefully not too bad that he can return at some point because that's definitely not the ending they had planned for these two no. teams. So. No. Uh, Tony Schiavone back in the ring to interview the women's champ, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. But they get interrupted by Red Velvet. And she says she wants a piece of DMD. And they jaw back and forth. Baker's like, yeah, I beat you in three minutes six months ago. So, But... If you want, you can have a title match against me at Rampage. Debut episode in my hometown of Pittsburgh, which is next Friday. So I guess a week from tomorrow. It's even sooner than we thought. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Baker, yeah, versus Velvet. She just beats her up. Uh, she knocks her, hits her with Rebel's crutch. So. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. To, it, it'll be great to see the women's champion coming back to her hometown. Uh, you know, probably getting a win. Um, I but, would say definitely getting. A yeah, win. yeah, definitely getting a win. Uh, whether or not this will be the main event, who knows? Who knows? They could have something big planned for the actual main event there. Maybe. I mean, maybe they will go with Brit in her hometown, home city. Um, I would, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. I mean, Red Velvet isn't the biggest opponent, but she could put on a good match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony though just stays in the ring because he's got an interview with the Hangman. Uh. But before Paige can really say anything, the elite come out, interrupt. Kenny's just getting in his face, insulting him. So Hangman punches him in the mouth, and the group just jump on Hangman. They all beat him up. Dark Order try to come out and help, but Uno and Grayson are just like, no, no, we got to stay back, boys. Respect his wishes. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Frankie Kazarian doesn't have to. He's the elite hunter, so he comes out, tries to help. But they're all outnumbered, and it ends with Paige getting hit in the head by Kenny with the the championship belt devastated so i mean they're still keeping the storyline alive but yeah they 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 want us to want it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and they're doing a great job and they're doing a great job yeah too uh but we do get a title match on this show the tnt championship miro defending against lee johnson uh he's in the nightmare family right yes can't keep track (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well if you're coming out with well, du- if you're coming out with Dustin Rhodes, you are in the Yeah, I guess now. you're with Dustin. Uh so he does okay here, gets a couple moves in, a couple big near falls, but Miro just takes over, dominates him. Uh yeah, ends up getting the game over locked in for the submission. Retains his title. That nice looking white and green. And that nice cool looking title. Yeah, you don't see green on a title belt too often. I uh, gotta give it up for Miro on this match. You know, of course, Miro is a dominant champion. Sold very well for this, you know, kind of like relative newcomer. Uh yeah. especially, you know, and his, his run in AEW, you can just see you can see it on him. He's motivated, he's energized, he's having a lot of fun. And uh, you know, the more you enjoy your performance, yeah, he's gonna wanna sell a little bit, make it look like <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh no! Oh no! Um, yeah, and you know, it's, it's just it's fun to see titles defended on a semi-regular basis. And uh, who's next um, for Miro? Yeah, no, he needs a big challenger for All Out. And uh, yeah, I guess there's certainly a lot of people that could step up. You got your Jungle Boys of the world. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right now yeah. heels dominate AEW. I mean, we don't really know what seems like it. We don't exactly know what Britt Baker is, uh, but yeah. Also, forgot to mention in the previous segment when oh. the uh, the elite came out, Kenny Omega was wearing a Cookie Monster shirt. Oh and yeah, Cookie Monster. This CM. they had this promo that was probably just like fodder, <laughs> fodder for nerds. 
uh, looking up little Easter eggs. Of course, he's wearing a shirt that says Cookie Monster, Cookie Monster, CM. Doc Gallows yeah. was wearing a Ric Flair style <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ric Flair robe or something. Thing, um, of course. Uh, I, who else? Um, one of them was wearing. No, the, of course. You know the Hawaiian shirt look is could be a nod to Bray Wyatt, the Wyatt yeah, family yeah. leader. I think also like uh, Carl Anderson was wearing flat out somebody's shirt. Like from WWF, the Bollywood boy. Yeah, he was wearing the Bollywood boy shirt. Yeah. Um, I Which... was trying to look for. <laughs> I was trying to look for uh, ways that uh, the Young Bucks were talking that may have been a thing that uh, Daniel Bryan would have said at one point. Yeah, I'm sure this 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 whole promo was just chocked full of little things like that. Because uh, yeah, all of them are coming. To, uh, I'm just gonna call it now. They're all coming AEW. Uh, just, there's no <laughs> two. Ric Flair, Bray Wyatt, Daniel Bryan. The I- the iconics Charlotte Flair, <laughs> they're all fucking coming, <laughs> baby. They're all WWE's going down, and it's starting right now. It's starting right now. There's the shoot meter. There's the shoot well, meter for you. They got that extra hour coming. Adam Cole. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to this uh, NWA Women's Title Contender match. So I guess you win, you get a title shot here. Mm-hmm. We got the Bunny taking on Layla Hirsch. Uh, picking up their brawl they started earlier. Uh, yeah, the match was fine. Bunny's been having a good year, record-wise. Uh, but this Layla Hurst, she's small, but she puts up a real good fight. Uh, but Bunny, or yeah, she ends up getting Bunny in her arm bar, taps her out. So Layla Hirsch gets the title shot. And who knows, maybe we'll see that title uh, championship opportunity occur here on AEW television. Layla Hirsch, ever since she came in, it's been like cool. You're like, yeah, you 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 appear as though you're a fighter, not yeah. just like, like a, a gimmicked person where you know, no, no, not nothing really to the bunny, but the bunny is a gimmick who then wrestled, uh, yeah. where Layla Hirsch has felt like a wrestler who then does the gimmick, and Kinda like uh, a Ronda Rousey. Yeah, and because of that, she doesn't see many losses between even between darks and elevations and. Uh, and all those things, you know, she's a great, you know, she was, they were, they were stuck in that crappy time slot, you know, that 945 or whatever, 936, yeah. uh, time slot, but hey, you know, you did, she did, they did, both of them did a great job within that. Yeah. And then afterwards the champion Camille, who I don't really know, comes out to confront her. Yeah, neither do I. I thought it was another woman was the champion, and then when I saw it was her, I was like, oh, I don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it was Serena Deeb. That's who I, I thought it was, but I think, honestly, Mike, I think that we're two behind that. Probably. Yeah, I think we are, <laughs> like it was somebody. If it didn't happen on AEW, then I don't know. Yeah, it was like uh, Serena Deeb, and then it was somebody else, and then somebody else again. So we're a, lo- we're a little bit behind the ball on that one. That's okay. We'll go to the main event, much anticipated. Weeks in the big, weeks of building up to this one here. Months, if you American inc- Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, months. Sure. I was gonna say months in the making. If you incur all the time that Malachi Black sat in a uh, dark, smoky room, building to this well, moment, yeah. <laughs> we'll be pushing close to a year, maybe with that. Uh, anyways, Cody Rhodes is taking on Malachi Black. Who comes out with this, uh, yeah, this dark, smoky entrance? He's got this, this skull mask on with like antlers. Look pretty know. cool. Cool look. Well, you know, yeah. I think, cool I look. think at, at times the Bucks have come out in a similar deer-inspired uh, getup, and now we see, uh, yeah. you know, Malachi Black doing a similar thing, but the dark version. <laughs> Yeah, his uh, his his trunks were slightly different. They were like shorts almost. He was wearing kind trunks. Loose... Yeah, we you normally we see him in kind of the. Uh, you know, the the uh, tights look. But no, we didn't. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, it doesn't matter. The wrestling was on point. I mean, it was, well, pretty one-sided affair. Just hard-hitting. Uh, Malachi, just, you know, he's one of the best strikers in the game. Good submission work. Uh, Cody tries to get a couple moves in. He climbs to the top rope. But then Black just jumps up, kicks him in the head, sends Cody to the floor, crashing through a table. But uh, there was a bit of a delay there on the kick and Cody jumping backwards. It was like a kick. I still appreciate ah. it. Yeah. And then like, well, let me look back. Okay, here I go. But We're good to go. I appreciate the bump. Yeah. Yeah. Good bump, though, Cody. Uh, but Cody gets back in the ring after that. Malachi just nails him with the black mass. 
whatever they call it here. Uh, but just like that, he doesn't even cover him. He just puts a foot over the chest of the fallen Cody as the ref makes the three count. And a huge win. JR sells it big. He was like, my God, what have we just seen? <laughs> um, and I mean, yeah, he beat him in under five minutes. That was a that was a very one-sided affair. The crowd was giving a standing ovation to Malachi Black, who looked like a king in this win. And talk about match length. We just went over, hey, long matches. And then suddenly a four-minute one happens, and we're like, wow. <laughs> well, I mean, when you use it to make a guy look this good, I thought it was very well done. Of course, after the um, match, as Malachi Black makes his way down to the... Uh, the backstage area, Cody gets a moment in the ring, uh, he's talking to Shivoni, gets a microphone there, cutting a promo, um, hinting, or rather he uh, goes on to say that he's thankful for all the opportunities, he gets to do this with his friends, he gets to bring professional wrestling away from the claws of the corporate conglomerate, um, and that he, this has been the best run of his life, puts the microphone down, goes to take off a single boot. JR, yeah, we're like, what's going on? JR promptly lets us know that it's tradition for uh, for uh, <laughs> uh, when a performer leaves the sport to leave their boots in the middle of the <laughs> ring. But before uh, Cody can pick up the mic or pick up the second boot, Malachi Black returns and blasts him uh, with a crutch as Cody falls uh, to end the show. Yeah, so Black stands tall. Uh, yeah, which, I mean, he won the match. Very happy to see that. Cody's little fake retirement. I don't know what that was about. Um, I mean, I, he's, he's not retiring. Come on. <laughs> I mean, right? he said he was like, guys. He's way too young. I, he, well, he, I, in that promo, he played into some of the things that we kind of have been feeling about him, too, where it's like he knows that he's the one on the front page. He knows he's the one that got asked to, uh, um, you know, be on the other shows, do other things that aren't wrestling, right? He knows he's the one that's being thrown down our throats, and uh, maybe he knows that it's time uh, to to hang up those boots, as it were. But even before all of that happened, Malachi Black made Cody Rhodes look like a fucking jobber that we just <laughs> fed to Papa Shango on a Saturday morning. Uh, this was, yeah, one of those dominant performances that you just sort of see out there. I also did not catch if they renamed the Black Mass. I also didn't catch what they called it now. Um, maybe they just kind of called it the Black Mass. Yeah, I mean, might as well. I don't think you can trademark Black Mass. I don't think you could. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this feud, I feel like we're going to write a few more chapters into this feud. And hopefully this, or maybe for the first time, the culmination of the story will not be a triumphant performance by Cody Rhodes. You know, I mean, we got multiple retirement teases. We're going to get a little bit more... Um, and, you know, this is the first time we've seen Cody Lo Cody Rhodes lost this dominantly to Brody Lee. I think maybe it was, the match yeah. was a little bit longer. Um, this one? This, uh, the Brody Lee match, I think, was a little bit longer. Uh -huh. It was like that dog collar match, maybe? I can't quite remember. Um, but, yeah, isn't it funny that Cody Rhodes knows how to shove himself down our throat, but then also knows how to <laughs> fucking job out to the person who should clearly get the win? It's funny that he knows how to fall on both sides of that coin. And Cody, Cody Rhodes' win-loss <laughs> record isn't, like, anything to, like, you know run home about like he gets losses and singles in uh in tag competitions kind of like all the time well i have heard that he's gotta be going to film the next season of the go big show so maybe this i don't know uh, and we are thing. and we already know he can't ever challenge for that uh AW championship ever again like that we got we got that step out of the way nice and early so um yeah it was great to see Malachi Black come back with this I don't think these two are over nor do I think they should be I think these two could tell one hell of a story going forward and it continues to remain this you know Cody left before Malachi got to WWE this continues to remain one of those fresh matches yeah no I'm sure that they'll have another match at all out in front of a bigger crowd and probably longer than five minutes yeah Definitely so, definitely so. And that was AEW, and that was all the uh, the roundup for the entire week. Big week here, um, sort of all throughout, I felt. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, as we wrap up our show, I think we only have time for one more thing, and that is to uh, for us both to name um, our wrestlers of the week. Mr. Wrestler of the week of the week. Wrestler of the week of the week of the week. The wrestler of the week of the week of the week. The wrestler of the week of the week. Mike, how about you uh, kick this one off for me? All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a couple good matches, a couple good performances. But uh, sometimes it's not about how much you do in the ring. It's just about how you come across. And uh, this man couldn't have come across any better. So I'll just give it to Malachi Black for all the stuff we just talked about. Looked as good as we know he is. Uh, and that dominant win over Cody Rhodes. So, nice main event for Malachi Black. Yeah, congratulations. And like I had said, he he popped up at PWG on the weekend. Um, Bandito won his, uh, his matchup against Jeff Cobb, I want to say. Anyways, he wins the he wins the match in their main event, and then shortly after, uh, you know, one in a in a classic lights go out, lights come back on. Uh, <laughs> Malachi Black was there, delivers that black mass. A lot of uh, AW performers were on that card. Uh, Orange Cassidy took on Evil Uno. Um, huh. I think there was a couple other ones too, whose names I do not recall here. But uh, but yeah, the show happened. It was great, and it looks like Malachi Black is. You know, moving around to more promotions. You know, who knows? It could be AEW. He showed up on PWG. Next thing we know, I don't know. Does he show up on a New Japan Strong type of thing? He is a clearly uh, sought after performer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, all the congratulations in the entire world to him. I'm gonna go the other way. We're going back to Monday Night Raw, my favorite show of all time. Um, 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 um. <laughs> and and I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm I'm looking straight for the main event of uh, of this past week's Monday Night Raw for my wrestler of the week, and I'm giving it none other than Nikki A S H Ashcross. Uh, this was, you know, not only did she get a singles competition win over Charlotte Flair, who is virtually unbeatable, uh, this was, I think, my favorite match that she's had possibly since, like, an Asuka match in NXT fucking years ago. Uh, (laughs) she's really found her footing as this champion, it's great that she's held onto the belt for a little bit, I'd love to see her hold on just a little bit longer, uh, you know, and before we can kind of move on, or don't move on and just fucking can be the champ she's doing a great job and uh just want to yeah that for all of those reasons you are the wrestler of the week way to go nikki yeah her hot streak continues hot streak continues and that's all the time we have for this week on the podcast folks uh rate review like subscribe the show is everywhere um and we have yeah um next is uh, do we will next week's show involve rampage no two weeks from now the show will involve rampage because that come happens on the 20th yeah, and uh, we'll yeah, we'll, out. we're gonna have to figure out how to retool the show <laughs> because it's a big few weeks coming up with Rampage, with all these free agent rumors, SummerSlam, Takeover thirty six, and then we'll probably cap it all. And then right when we thought that was all over, we do have All Out, and I believe the show before All Out is at MSG, so it's just going to be a huge, huge September in the oh sorry, uh, August yeah. September. Summer's going out with a bang. It really is. It really is. And uh, we cannot wait. So tune in next week, folks. And um, uh, Mike, you take care of yourself. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Shoot.